नानम परमम धेयम नॉलेज इज सुप्रीम Let us now see how a first order system reacts to a disturbance. So we'll look at two most commonly used disturbances. One is a step disturbance, and other is a sinusoidal disturbance. And we'll try to see uh, what are the responses of first order system when there is a first order lag or a purely capacitive system. And then we'll try to see the significance of the two parameters, Kp and tau. So the first type of disturbance we'll analyze is a step disturbance or step input. so we have a transfer function for our system which is a ratio of tra laplace transform of output to the laplace transform of input which for a first order lag is kp over tau s plus 1 we'll look at unit step response so the laplace of that would be a over s where a is the step size so we if we want ys it will be kp over tau s plus 1 times us which is kp over tau s plus 1 into a over s so that gives so ys is equal to kp a kp over tau s tau s plus 1 now in order to get the response in a real time domain we will have to invert this laplace and the method we are going to use is method of partial fractions so what does that mean we will split this transfer function or this laplace transform into parts for which we know the inverse so in this case we can write y is equal to a kp and the denominator has s and tau s plus 1 so if we add two fractions like this and take two coefficients as small a and small b then the addition of these can give rise to this 1 over s tau s plus 1 so the idea is we have to find these coefficients a and b uh, and then once we have that we know the in inverse laplace of 1 over s so laplace inverse of 1 over s will be a constant or a unit step and the laplace inverse of 1 over s plus a is e raised to minus at so once we have converted it into a partial fraction we will be able to get the inverse of the final output so let us try to find out how we get this small a and b which has to be equal to a k p 1 over s tau s plus 1 so we can write a times tau s plus 1 plus b has to be equal to 1 for all values of s so in order to get any coefficient we can simply substitute appropriate value of s let us put s equal to minus 1 over tau so we will get minus b over tau equal to 1 which gives me b equal to minus tau we can substitute s equal to 0 in that case we will get a equal to 1 so what we have is ys is equal to a kp 1 over s 
minus tau over tau s plus 1 which we can again rearrange so we have represented y s as sum of the two fractions for which we know the laplace inverse so if we take inverse laplace now we will get y t will be equal to a k p. This inverse of this will be a constant which is 1 minus the Laplace inverse of 1 over s plus a is e raised to minus a t. So, it will be e raised to minus t over tau. So, that is the response of a first order system to a step change of the size a. So, let us now try to analyze how does this solution look like and what is the importance of these two parameters uh, k p and tau. So, if we plot the response of y t versus time, the plot we are going to get So, at time t equal to 0, when we substitute t equal to 0 in the response, so let me just rewrite the response here as well, y t is equal to a k p 1 minus e raised to minus t over tau. So, when t is equal to 0, we have e raised to minus t will be 1, so we will have 1 minus 1, so that is 0. So, the response will start at the origin. Now, let us consider what is the final value of this response. So, let us consider t tending to infinity. As t tends to infinity, e raised to minus t will go to 0. So, the final value of the response will be a k p. So, if this represents a k p, So, for a very long time the response would somehow reach this or approach this particular line. Now, let us look at how does the response change as a function of time. So, we will calculate the derivative of the response which we can get as a k p over tau e raised to minus t over tau. So, if we look at the derivative at time t equal to 0, it will be a k p over tau which is greater than 0. So, your uh, response will have a positive slope at time t equal to 0. So, the response is going to kick off at time t equal to 0 and if we simulate or plot the actual values of this function, uh, the response would look like this. So, this is the response of a first order system to a unit step change. So, we can now look at what is the total change in output is the change from start value to the end value that is a k p minus 0 is equal to a k p and this change in the output was caused by a change in input of the value a. So, if we look at what is the magnification of the effect of u, we can find out delta y over delta u that is a total change in output to a total change in input that will be a k p over a which is equal to k p. So, k p represents how much the effect of input gets magnified when we will see that effect in the output 
and sort of it sorts of acts as a gain between input and output that is why it is known as a process gain so it tells me if the input changes by 5% then the output will change by 5% times kp so that is the significance of one of the parameters of first order system which is the process gain and let us now try to see the response as a function of time and uh, try to capture uh, how the response changes so we'll make a chart of time and a corresponding value so at time t equal to 0 the output was 0 now if t was equal to tau so if we go back to the previous slide if we take time equal to tau and find out the response that response will come out to be 0.632 times akp so when time is equal to tau the response we get is 0.632 times akp which is same as 63.2% of the final value as the final value is kp so within the interval of time t equal to tau we have already completed the journey up to 63% of the final response if we look at the similar value at 2 tau the value we are going to get is 0.86 5 akp so within 2 tau the system reaches almost more than 85% of the final response in 3 tau the similar value will come out to be 0.95 akp and lastly if we calculate up to 5 tau it will come out to be 0.93 993 akp so that is 1% of the final value within 1% of the final value so for all practical purposes that is almost equivalent to considering the final value so we don't need to consider the response up to infinite time we typically would consider the response up to t equal to 5 tau which sort of tells you that the system has reached the final value so in or if we want so what does that mean is the speed of response of a first order system is directly tied to this time constant tau if the tau is small then correspondingly 5 tau will also be small and then we will have the system will reach its final value at a faster rate compared to a system which has higher tau so speed of response is related to tau smaller the tau faster will be the system so that is the significance of time constant if we are comparing two first order systems then this we can compare the speed of response uh, by comparing the values of tau for the two systems now before moving forward let us also see how a purely capacitive system or a integrator reacts to a unit step change we have the process transfer function g of s is equal to kp over s we'll take us as a over s so we have ys is equal to gs times us which gives us akp over s square 
Now Laplace inverse of 1 over s square is t. So the response we are going to get here is a k p t. So the response linearly increases as a function of time. And the slope of the response will be a k p. So in this case k p somehow tells me about the speed of response. Larger the value of k p, larger will be the slope and the faster will be the system reaching its ultimate value which in this case is the physical limitation on how much the output can change. Mathematically it will go to infinity but physically there will always be some limitation or maximum value of y which it can take. So it will maybe if it is a tank it is the 100% level of that tank. So the f higher the value of kp faster will be the system response to go to the final or the extreme limit. Thank you.